First question is from Josh Kaur. Is there a rule of thumb one should stick by when programming their own workouts? Yes. Josh Core. There's a lot of, uh, of rules of thumb, but I think the, the number one rule of thumb, probably the best possible thing you could do when you're programming your own workout is the same thing that a trainer would absolutely have to do before training a client. Learn how to do a self-assessment. Mm, this yep. makes a huge difference in how you train yourself. That's so, the foundation right there. Right, off of. right. So, you know, some basic ways to do it. Like you could take a, have some take a picture of your posture standing sideways. This isn't perfect, but it's one simple, easy one. And you look at your posture, you're like, man, my shoulders really round forward. Okay, now you know because your shoulders round forward, I'm going to try and insert exercises that focus on bringing my shoulders back. That's just a simple example. Or if you try to do a squat and you notice your hips aren't activating, maybe insert exercises that help you fire and activate your glutes. Now, if you really want to go the extra mile and get very individualized without hiring a trainer, because trainers can be expensive, um, Maps Prime has a self-assessment tool. There's three movements, and you kind of feel... Now, why is, it, is an assessment so important? It literally tells you what exercises to focus on and which, which ones you shouldn't do. So back to the forward shoulder. You got somebody with really bad forward shoulder. Time to work out their back. You know what exercise I'm not, I'm not going to do? Lat pull downs. I'm not going to do lots of lat pull downs because that's going to, in many times, encourage that forward shoulder. It's going to encourage their, their bad posture. And the worst thing you can do is get really strong at moving bad. So mm -hmm. if you don't, if you, if you don't figure it out and you just go throw exercises at yourself, you may actually make certain things worse. Now, besides injuries and pain and all that stuff, it just slows down your progress. It just doesn't make you uh, progress as fast. I had no idea you were going to go that direction because, you know, when you think of a question like this, the, the typical thing is talking about periodization and talking about order of exercise. Yeah. And, yeah. and Those uh, are important too. No, 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 they are. But I'm actually really glad you went that way because that wasn't on my mind. Overload. But it, 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 um, it's true that, you know, it's one thing to be going to the gym and all you're focused on is losing body fat or building muscle. But the, the truth is every client that all of us train, that that was that was part of their goal. Their my main focus always was to address, you know, chronic pain and and posture first or while I was heading towards their goal. And when you do a good assessment and you and you find out uh, what's going on with your body? Why are you not able to squat all the way to the ground? Why are you not able to get your hands back against the wall? I just did something on my story the other day. You can see me struggling with it, and and I, and I show that too. I love when people DM me too and like point out like all the shit. Like, <laughs> oh, you're not doing this very well. I'm like, yeah, no shit, bro. It's, yeah. I'm sharing That's why I'm it. Working on it, right? Yeah. Exactly. I'm sharing it so people know that even somebody who's a trainer who's been doing this long, it's not like something that. You know, you do one time, or that I'm I'm immune to it. Like I, I like it's an area. I'm on my phone all day. I sit more than I've ever sat in my life this last five years, and so it's something that I I constantly have to work on. And it, it's a priority. It's the first priority before I get into the lift. Like yeah, the bench press part's fun, and I love to to lift heavy and and get stronger and build muscle. But before that, you know, it's me spending ten minutes uh, addressing all the things that I need to to work on. And to me. Uh, the most valuable thing I think trainers can give to clients is this now, and you don't need to be a trainer to to understand this. This was this was a lot of the motivation behind Prime was yes, it was a tool that we thought about trainers when we when we created it. Like every trainer should have this in their arsenal, especially if they're an online coach. But we really wanted to simplify it enough that like our my mom could pick it up, could read through it, watch the videos and understand the things that she should be doing to help her body out before she goes into a, a basic workout. And so that was the idea of this program and if there is it and I love that you went this way Sal because it wasn't where I was thinking at all. It's true like this should be the place that you start and at the bare minimum be doing that. And then the next rule of thumb for me is working on the big lifts, right? And getting good at them and understanding that if you're not good at them, which is very common, it's common that you don't have a good deadlift, you don't have a good squat, you don't have a good... And the reason why that is, is for why you do the assessment and you work on those things because mm -hmm. most people don't move on, on a squat or a deadlift or an overhead press or a bench press well because they have dysfunction, because they're not good, they're not, they don't have favorable movement patterns that mm -hmm. they need to work on. So that's why what Sal said is the first rule then what the next thing is use those four core lifts 
and and look at it like you're trying to get good at the skill of it yeah. and practice getting good. And then when you're not good or you feel weird things when you're bench pressing, it doesn't feel right. Or you notice when you squat, things break down, the knees come in or you can't get very deep. Instead of just saying, I'm a bad squatter, I'm going to give up, I'm not do it. Try and dive deeper into your own body and learn why yeah, that is. Uh, I mean, to reiterate, you know, basically what, what both of you have said, it's it, like for me, it's it, the rule is really, you know, the assessment part of it is is understanding how the body is properly functioning or it's not, you know, are all the joints able to do what they're supposed to do without, you know, pain and restriction and, you know, and then it's, it's, it's a matter of if not in certain things, then, you know, I'm not going to load that movement. And so there, there's just standards like that where, you know, I'm, I'm going unloaded with, with clients in terms of like doing a squat, for instance, you know, until uh, we get enough stability support to then like gradually add load. But definitely treating uh, the major lifts like a skill is a very important thing to then, you know, aspire to, you know, get your get your programming towards, you know, uh, something that's like like a very admirable uh, squat, you know, bench press overhead lift, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So. By the way, do you guys know where the term rule of thumb came from? Uh, yeah, I remember this. Th this was on um, that movie with the uh, Boondock Saints. Where... Oh, did they talk about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, this, this big lady was beating this guy up about it. Apparently, it was uh, th there were laws in certain areas where you could only hit your wife, you could with hit a, your partner with, with a stick, with, with a stick that was as big, like as big as your big thumb. As your that thumb. was the biggest. Yeah. So they they were trying to control the. Right. <laughs> they were, the what? beatings. Yeah, I did so, not know that. So they call it the rule of thumb. Like you could hit your wife with a stick, but it couldn't be bigger. <laughs> very PC. Yeah, yeah than very, the thumb. very, very plain. Anyway, that's. Yeah. I think that. Yeah. I mean, that's what I've read. Maybe it's a myth. I'm sure people will correct me if it is. Here's another good uh, rule of thumb, right? Um, and I'm, I'm gonna put it very, very plainly. Practice exercises often. Train them less often. Yeah. So, okay. So what I mean by that is, rather than going into your squat session and thinking you're gonna hammer your legs. More often, what you should do is go into your squat sh session thinking, I'm going to get good at squats and practice yes. them. Totally different mentality, and it dictate it actually directs your workout in ways that are more beneficial. And, well, and let's explain what that kind of looks like. So let's take, for example, you, you've you gone through like the, the squat assessment on uh, MAPS Prime, and there's certain movements on there that we teach to help improve, you know, if you have a, a quote-unquote broken squat. So you know what those movements are. It might be 90-90 stuff. might be combat stretch. When you're going in to practice a squat, sometimes this is what it looks like for me. I do all those priming movements that I'm supposed to do before I get into a squat. Then I go do a set, and it's a light set. It's not supposed to be really heavy. I want some load on the bar because I want to feel the weight. I also feel like when you, especially with squatting. Well, you got to practice with something. Right, right. right. It, it, sometimes it helps to get into the movement better even to have some weight than just your body weight. So loading the bar somewhat, but not like like less than 50% intensity on it. And then I I, I do the movement and I, 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 I'm watching myself in the mirror or maybe I even use my phone to record myself. I look at it and I pay attention to what, look. oh wow, I, you know, I look like I'm getting a little bit more travel in my knees from my combat, so that's great. But oh man, I feel like my knees are caving in. So then I go back, I sit down, I do some more priming movements, then I go back to another set of squats. Then I look and assess again, then I go back and do some more priming. And I'm what I'm doing is I'm trying to get better connected, work on my movement patterns, and then go, and you know, I'm teetering back and forth between these priming movements and the squat, because my goal isn't how much weight can I throw in the bar or how strong can I get. Or how get. much can I hammer my legs. Right, or, or how sore can I get. It's mm -hmm. I want to get better at this movement. Right, so it's the difference between like if you're learning how to swim and you're, you're practicing how to swim well, mm -hmm. it's the difference between practicing swimming and just going as fast as you can yeah. in a meet, okay? Uh, that's the difference. So you're going to approach your, your exercises – as practice, more often than not, and every once in a while when you feel comfortable and form is good, you can push it and train yourself. It's a really, really good rule of thumb for most people. And by the way, practicing exercise, especially if you do it frequently. So if I practice squats three days a week, I'm going to build muscle and I'm going to get stronger. The frequency of, of practice is what really sends uh, that muscle building signal. So two other things I really consider while, you know, being in a program or programming for other clients is, you know, how long have they been in, you know, uh, like one plane of motion and, and, and how can I incorporate more planes of motion? Uh, so it actually expresses, uh, those specific movements that the joint needs to, uh, go through in order to remain healthy, remain a part of the stability process. And so like, I'm always looking through and like kind of scanning it. Have they been, uh, you know, equally loaded uh, 
too long? Like, should we should we do some unilateral training? Uh, should we do some more rotational movement? Uh, should we go left to right? Uh, all these things are, are you should consider because the body is capable of those things, and we should train them. Right. So, in other words, train like if you're always doing squats with two legs, and that's what you've been doing for a while. Try some single leg uh, exercises, or try something where you move to the side, right? Like a lateral lunge versus a. Hey, look, if, if here's the other thing you can do. Uh, obviously, part, one of the easiest ways to do this is like you know get the program maps prime, follow the assessment. But we also have a YouTube channel with a bunch of free videos and stuff on there. Another thing you can do if you want to do the if you want to just use all of our free information is when you do your self assessment. One thing you could do is say what parts of my body tend to bother me. Go on our video library and see if you can find something. So, uh, you know, my my hips tend to bother me, or my squat doesn't feel good. Go on the YouTube channel Mind Pump TV and just search like squat mobility movements or shoulder mobility movements because my shoulders bother me or my back or whatever. You'll find free videos and those movements uh, more often than not will benefit you and get you better at doing your traditional exercises.